I'm a believer, but I also strongly believe in the good example. That's why I always carry on my chest not the image of Jesus Christ, but the ones of Saint Ivan of Riola, Saint Francis of Assisi, and Saint Seraphim of Sarov. All of them were mortal men like me and you. All of them lived not so long time ago and showed us that more important than the faith in God is the faith that we can be good and kind to each other. I have traveled the globe and I've met a lot of people who believe in different gods. I have close friends who are Buddhists, Muslims and even ones who believe that after that they will join their fallen brothers in arms in Valhalla. And the more I get older, the more I find that the good guy is a good guy no matter which god he is serving and the bad guy is a bad guy no matter how religious he is. I believe in the good God no matter what his name is and I know that sometimes he touches some of us and helps us being able to achieve great things to make this world a better place for our children. And I believe this is exactly what helped the heroes of our story, a Christian man and a Muslim kid, to meet and change the world a little bit. Kazakhstan national jiu -Jitsu team. It took me exactly 12 months to return to the beautiful city of Abu Dhabi. It was a crazy year. I've done a special forces documentary that went viral and was selected for two festivals abroad. I've been in charge of a survival primetime reality show in the wilderness of Eastern Europe. And finally, I found the time, money and dedication to return here and continue my adventure. My partner in crime will join me later since he is in Iran taking part in a marathon. These days he's really into that stuff. The first ever marathon in Iran and the PJJ Nomad is here. And this is the tombs of the Persian kings Xerxes, Darius and a few other kings are buried here. It's very funny because the start and finish point is at the tombs of the kings and probably at the end of the race I'm gonna be almost dead, I'm gonna need the tomb. We'll meet Demetrius later on our way to the Sultanate of Amman, but before that, I'm here to join a fighter whose story really got me last time I was here. A kid who overcame his own fears and the disbelief of the others and made his dream come true. A warrior who once was called a child with special needs, but now is known only as a world champion. I'm on my way to meet him. Of course, if I first manage to find the venue where the World Championship in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu will be held today. I'm not pretty sure which way now. They're going to search for my dead body. Excuse me, sir, for IPIC Arena. I'm not understanding all the Ah, okay. IP, IPIC Arena, Sports Arena, Zayed Sports City. Ah, uh, yeah, Zayed Sports City. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. My name is Mikhail, but nowadays most of the time they call me the Nomad. For the past 14 years I've been in charge of some of the biggest primetime television projects in Eastern Europe. Big Brother, The Farm, The Mole, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you name it, I've done it. Three years ago I decided to make a huge life change and just quit my executive job as a TV producer to become a traveling filmmaker and do a documentary series about the way of the warrior around the world called BJJ Nomad. I've told hundreds of stories of world champions, special forces soldiers, mixed martial artists and brave warriors who looked death in the eye and didn't even blink. My partner in this adventure is the original BJJ nomad himself, Dimitrius, a lifeguard, ex-professional swimmer and a BJJ black belt who spent the last 10 years traveling around the world, teaching, competing and enjoying the lifestyle of a nomad, visiting more than 60 countries and never staying more than 6 months at one place. This is my pirate's diary and the stories of the brave men and women I've met through my journey. Welcome to the Nomad Chronicles. If you still don't, you should know that IPIC Arena is probably the most important jiu-jitsu venue on the globe nowadays. Today, it will host the World Championship for Kids and Juveniles. As you can see, kids are already preparing for the tournament. It will be the biggest ever kids tournament in the world because they'll be competing about like 1500, 1500 kids from all over the world. 1500. I am not sure if there are 1500 competitors in the whole Eastern Europe. If you follow our journey, you already know that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is an obligatory sport in all schools here in the United Arab Emirates and as a parent, I embrace that. Don't run away, don't go out, I don't care. 
Jiu-Jitsu in early age is a great idea. Your kid will learn a discipline and that when the problems come, you just have to stay calm and overcome them. If not, you tap and roll again. The kid that I will tell you a story about never got a participation medal, never quit because he was tapped. Through Jiu-Jitsu, he learned to hold his life tight and became a champion on the mat, but most important, in life. Here is the team we are searching for. This is Pedro. He is the teacher of Khalifa, the guy that I came here to, to shoot. Actually, he was the only thing that I was searching for here. How are you, man? World champion. World champion. <laughs> this is the guy I'm searching for. Yeah. Missing? You're looking for. No, he goes to put the pants. This is Khalifa. He was born without four fingers on his left hand. He is a jiu-jitsu fighter. Today, he will fight in the Blue Belt Juvenile Division. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Gold Just medal today? I hope so. He is definitely not here for a participation medal. He is not here to take part, but to take over. When I was a kid, I tried to do football, like when I was grade three or four. But, I, you know, I was so bad in football. I was looking for something that I will be good at, uh, especially with my, with my hand. Of course, there is something that I can do in this world. Then I found Jiu-Jitsu, and, uh, yeah, things began to happen. Organizer from the AJJ Federation, they, they told me your fight will be the second yeah. fight. Yeah. First fight is the Ali yeah. Asia. Yeah. After you, I will be there in the match with you, like the previous year. Okay? The first days in Jiu Jitsu was, was so hard for me because like, I, I was feeling so shy because of my hands. I didn't want to show. Like, I wasn't communicating with people. Like, the guys were saying to me, ah, how you can train and you don't have fingers, you can't grip, you can't do this, you can't do this. You know, and like, they start making me disappointed from this sport. When I saw him, when he came to my class, I, I think uh, God gave me some, something for me. In the end of the class, I hugged him, he made a said, Khalifa, we don't have the same religion. I'm Christian, you are Muslim. In my religion, people say, if God takes something out from you, they give another things better than normal people. If you don't have one hand, or God will give you more power, or give you more endurance, or give you more, or you'll be more smarter than, smarter than another guys. And he look at me, he's very small that time. I know, coach, I know, don't worry, I know that. And <laughs> we walk, you know. <laughs> but it, it was a nice moment that I never forget when I said that to him, it, it was nice. As I said before, uh, I was so shy from my issue. Like I, I was walking and my hand inside my pocket. You know, I wasn't communicating with people. You know, because of my hands. I, you know, and I was a little bit uh, aggressive with the boys, with the people around me, because of my issue. Then the coach, uh, the coach showed me a picture of a legend in Jiu-Jitsu, Gian Jackie Machado, who had the same issue in his hand. When I, when I saw that picture, I said to my coach, this guy is not better than me. He don't, like, he's a human and I'm a human too, so I can be a champion like him. He said to me, yeah, of course you can. That's why I showed you the pictures. Since that day, me and my coach started planning for the future. Touch my hand, why did you touch?
One day you have a physical test at school. It's it's about push-ups to give a mark in the end of the term. And he did like 38 push-ups, 10 years old. And I, and I saw that, I say, oh my gosh. <laughs> I have to, I have to work hard because he is very hard, you know. He, he, he wants, you know, and he, and he things going, you know. After that, So I started competing. In the first competition I went in, it was in the school, like between the students. I got the first place. The second one was the national here in the country. So I lost for a good guy, like he was a very good guy. I start learning from my mistakes. Then I start improving myself. And in 2012, I got my first medal, the World Pro here. It was uh, like a, an amazing moment. I was I was a yellow belt. Khalifa Murad, مشاهدينا الكرام قاعد يعطي الميدالية الذهبية إلى سيدي الفريق أول سمو الشيخ محمد بن زايد آل نهيان. I felt like uh, someone ate my tongue. I couldn't talk. I couldn't. I was just I I was just smiling, and I was so happy when I became a world champion. The life started becoming easier. Like I, like I thought that now it's the time to train hard. It's the time to to be better, uh, better than than the person that I am now. So it was the happiest moment in my life and the greatest thing that I got from jujitsu. Khalifa won every single fight he had today, which meant he made it to the finals tomorrow, and his last season as a juvenile will conclude with a medal. Mr. It's not finished. It's not finished. It's not finished. Keep your power. It's not finished. Well, that's it for today. So I leave Khalifa and Pedro to rest before the big day tomorrow and I head to the beach where I have to meet my partner Dimitrius. After the juvenile finals tomorrow, both of us will travel to the next stop in our journey, the Sultanate of Oman. I'm just going to the beach to meet Dimitrius, who yesterday returned from Iran for, uh, from a marathon uh, which he had there. And you can very easy, you can very easy recognize where the guy is staying. I told him we need the gi for some shooting and the guy came like that, like casually with the gi. Maybe I'll put mine later and we cruise around the town with geese. That's him, the little guy there, doing butterfly. I guess I'll, I guess I'll wait for him here on the BJJ Nomad towel. Here he is, Dimitrios Tsitos, the BJJ Nomad. I just came from Iran. I did a marathon there. Why is that? Just because I'm stupid enough to put myself into suffering. And in a couple of months, I have a full Ironman triathlon. So I have to swim, cycle, and run a lot. One of the biggest misconceptions, again. One of the biggest misconceptions, this word, I need to find a synonym. <laughs> One of the biggest misconceptions we get by our travels is people stop us and ask us, hey man, you travel all the time like a gypsy, like someone that is homeless. People many times 
think that in order to do what we're doing, in order to be a BJJ nomad, you need to quit everything, you need to quit your job, quit your studies or never study. I see all the time some motivational posters, like uh, quit your job, start training BJJ, start traveling, be awesome. Yes, it's a very nice idea, it's very romantic, but being a BJJ nomad is not an irresponsible, spontaneous, sudden decision that I was taking within one day. It was a process that uh, took me many, many years. I believe that you have to have solid backgrounds in what you do. I believe in uh, education. I believe in work experience. I believe in having next to you good people, good network. And uh, this is the way that uh, we are here now. I'm gonna use a quote. I know everyone is used to nowadays using quotes, but I'm gonna be stereotype again. Well, life is like a book. If you don't travel, you stay only in the first page. So I guess I'm at least in the middle of the book right now. الفوز الاخير على الوحده وقبل الفوز على الشارجه اكبر دليل ان هذا Just cruising around Abu Dhabi in kimonos the only very casual is very casual yeah so popular here also very popular getting thrown in jail for walking with a kimono for walking with a kimono and his hairy chest kind of out and we're next to the park with the kids playing here, families doing barbecue. Yeah, good idea. The next morning, I'm back again at the IPIC arena. Khalifa is here long before me and look really focused on the preparation for the gold medal fight. What he still doesn't even imagine is that he will have a special cornerman for this battle. A living jiu-jitsu legend that just came all the way from Brazil. <laughs> You fighting? Yeah. yeah I, I was his partner when he was a pride MMA fight. And he, he's a, the guys have a good heart. And I think he's coming here to we can have a good vibration from him. Good coach, okay? Good coach. <laughs> good coach. <laughs> Always I said to my students, I believe you become a world champion, but do you believe? And he always, Khalifa showed to me he believed in his dreams, you know, and he, we learn, we share something, you know, because it, it's very interesting when you have someone like, he, like him with this issue, this disability, and he, he never stopped, in the way. You got your game in your mind. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Everything. Just gonna say to my game. Win or lose. No, no, no. You're gonna win. Yeah. But win or lose, I have to do my job. No doubt. You I have to give you my best. Jiu-Jitsu changed a lot of things inside me. Jiu-Jitsu taught me to respect myself, to respect the people around me, to avoid the violence. Yeah, I want to say to the people that have some problems and some health issues, and they are sitting in the home, go try to do something. Nothing is impossible in this world. Uh, you can do anything. Try to find something to do and don't stay in home. Just show to the people that you can do something. Yujari, Khalifa. Oh, hello. 
يرفع لنا ينهض يجب ان يستقيم او يستقيم ويرفع راسه الى الاعلى مشاهدينا الكرام خطر هذه الحركه لكن في نفس الوقت يحاول ما يعطي يده اليمين محاوله من بلاش هاي محاوله جميله لخليفه لكسر الحركه صعبه صعبه الوضعيه صعبه الوضعيه You deserve the goal. We deserve the goal, but it's a very good one. I like it. It's to my champion. For this moment, the main goal is to be an open weight black belt champion. And the plan is just train hard. My disability will be a weapon. I can use it against my opponents to win. So I'm sure that I'll be world open weight champion. No excuse, no weakness. Sometimes they ask me, who made the most submissions in that tournament? And I always answer, I don't know, and I don't really care. I can tell you who had the most heart. It was Khalifa. And this guy. Also this guy. That guy. These guys became champions in life, and it's all that matters. The rest is just some piece of metal. This film was released with the kind support by Grips Athletics, tested, approved and loved for BJJ Nomad lifestyle by the BJJ Nomad crew and Hazard 4, progressive tactical gear, trusted by special forces, available to all.